Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills, maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. So feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So with all of that said, let's get to the good stuff. Today's video is part two of our three-part petticoat sew along series. Last time we covered all of the supplies needed to make a petticoat and discussed how to measure and cut petticoat pieces, so if you missed that, go ahead and check the links in the description below to get caught up. And once you have your pieces and supplies gathered, we'll get started. There are lots of ways that you can order the steps of assembling a petticoat, and there are pros and cons to each, but for the purposes of this sew along, we are going to start with the side seams first. Match the edges of your panels together. Uh, if you're using two 60 inch panels or three 45 inch panels, you should be matching probably salvages in this step. Uh, so go ahead, match those, pin them together. This is one time where you probably don't need to baste your pieces first, but if you don't like stitching around pins, uh, you certainly could baste. I will leave this up to you this time. Once your edges are temporarily secured, however you chose to do that, we are going to go ahead and seam up the panels. So if you are using 60 inch panels, again, the seams here are going to be on the sides of your petticoat. So you wanna leave about 10 inches or so at the top unseamed on both sides. This will become your pocket holes. If your seams are not on the sides of your petticoat, you will need to find the sides by matching center front to center back and then mark the, the side with either a pin or a couple of basting stitches in place so that you know where your pocket holes will be, and we'll come back to that in a little bit. For the actual seaming, the stitch that you choose and the number of stitches per inch will vary based on your fabric selection. With our fabric, we are using a fairly generous running back stitch, so taking up a few running stitches with a back stitch in between. If you want to practice with this stitch, uh, or really any of the stitches in today's video, check out the links in the description below to brush up on your hand skills. If you aren't using full widths of the fabric or you had to cut off a fuzzy or a yucky salvage and you think your fabric is just going to fray really easily, you might actually um, seem like what we're doing today, but then turn the edges under and hem them to the interior uh, so you will be able to have a completely finished inside. You could also use a different technique known as a mantua maker seam. This is a seaming method we've seen more at the end of the 18th century and into the early 19th century, and it works really, really well on lighter weight textiles. To do this, you're going to fold both edges of the fabric once and you're gonna baste. Do not pin here, you must baste. <laughs> and then fold the edge over again uh, and then hem. This will leave a normal uh, kind of finished uh, exterior and it will leave a finished interior where it looks like it has a little flap essentially. Check out our mantua maker seam tutorial for a closer look at this technique if you're going to use it on your petticoat. All right, now that our seams are done, let's go ahead and talk about pocket holes. If your seams were on the sides of your petticoat, you should have 10 inches or so that you left open at the top. If your seams were not at the side of your petticoat, you should have marked the side points with a pin or basting stitches. Find those, and then we're going to cut 10 inches or so down from the side points to make a pocket hole. Now 
To finish the edges of your pocket holes, regardless of how they got there, uh, you are going to turn the edge under twice and hem. If you are hard on your clothes, you might actually want to put a bar tack across the bottom of your pocket hole. So to do that, uh, take a few loose stitches in place uh, to make a bridge of sorts between the two sides, then work a buttonhole stitch across the bridge. This can help your pocket hole from tearing out if it gets caught by anything. The last thing we're going to do today is finish the bottom edge of our petticoat and we're going to do that by turning the edge under twice, keeping that turn fairly small. Hems are not usually very deep in the 18th century, uh, they tend to be on the narrower side. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and hem stitch the entire circumference of the petticoat, so you're going to get a lot of practice with hem stitching. And friends, I think this is a pretty good place to stop for today. So once you are done hemming, grab yourself a cuppa of whatever you want it to be and join us next time for part three, where we will make some happy pleats and finish our petticoats. Um, but as we leave you today, uh, we, we thought that we would give you something a little bit lighthearted and uh, fun to reflect on before we go.